I wanted to give a little overview of my thoughts on recent events from Aptera in the past few weeks. I really appreciate how they listened to the fans about DC fast charging, and even more impressive, addressed it and explained it the next business day. They said the minimum will be 40 kilowatts, which will be 400 miles, which is impressive on its own because it's so efficient and will be very usable for road trips. With more testing, it might be possible to get to 60 kilowatts or 600 miles an hour. I did mention that more cooling and development would be needed for the 100 kilowatt charge rate, which makes sense. That's a lot of power. Most likely this is coming with a 1000 range model. 1000 miles, 1000 miles put back in an hour. That's quite a marketing checkpoint. After watching the investor webinar, I was very impressed with all the technical details and supply info they shared. Aptera asked to keep info from that webinar confidential. But if you watched it, you know what I'm talking about. The tool still for the Aptera body is being cut or finished at this point in, at CPC, which is a huge step. That is the most expensive part of the vehicle other than the battery, I believe. They also have the software and hardware currently in use at their solar factory for managing and ordering inventory, tracking parts, etc. Which is honestly more impressive than you think to have this working before they even start production. They have been digitally building up Terra since last year and have been testing this. They showed a sneak peek at their factory tour last September. Very smart on their part and will allow them to shift into making up Terra very easily once they have all the supplies. They really seem to be in a prime spot to launch into production once funding comes. They're just finalizing little details at this point. Let's chat about the Aptera Accelerator program. This is coming from an earliest reservation holder in June 2021. I'm an investor and also an ambassador. A quick overview of the program is if you invest another 10,000 on invest.aptera.us, you will get on the leaderboard of 2,000 people. Whatever amount you invested prior to this new $10,000 investment gets added to your total. This ends midnight on March 26, 2023 Pacific time. In three weeks, they have already raised over $3 million from 252 investors. So they're on a good pace so far. I think a lot of this will come in the last few weeks as the bidding war starts to heat up. For those of you that were angry about this program and how it would delay your order if you're among the early reservation holders, they plan to build 40 vehicles a day. It would only delay your place in line by 50 days or so if you're not on this 2000 member list. This program is all about getting into production sooner. If they didn't do this investment push, you'd most likely have to wait even longer to get your Aptera. Even if I was among the early reservation holders, I would be okay with this, honestly. Some interesting info from the FAQ on the accelerator program that I noticed. This has already been known, but you get a free pre-order if you invest $10,000 and a 5% discount on the price of the vehicle. All customers who receive reservation slots of the 2000 must take delivery of their vehicle in Carlsbad, California. So you don't have to live in California, you just have to pick it up there. Interesting thing is if you secure one of the first 2000 reservation slots, you can transfer it to someone else. They also talk about the Paradigm Edition owners. If you're not within the first 2000 reservation slots, those vehicles will be made next after those first 2000 are made. All original Paradigm orders will be marked unique and include an exclusive, unique collector's item. No mention of what this is at this moment. And Jason Hill mentioned on his LinkedIn that each of the accelerator program vehicles will be uniquely identified as being one of the first 2000 vehicles from Aptera. Again, no other info than this. I'm curious what that means. I would be cool to have like some signatures within the vehicle somewhere, but we'll wait and see what they, what they offer us. Here's some other interesting tidbits of info from interviews with Chris Anthony and Jason Hill from Apt Arizona Club and Drive the Lightning. They said they're not going to build a physical Delta, they're going straight to production tooling. Steve Fambro and Chris Anthony 
recently attended the FTE Winter Investor Summit in Switzerland. Be interesting to see if any big investors come out of this. They actually took Gamma to this event. I'm sure it turned quite a few heads while it was there. Chris mentioned they're looking at the most efficient wheel bearing possible to get highest efficiency possible, less resistance. They're looking at weight savings on all parts of the vehicle from the wiring weight, weight of the hinges, seals, everything. The efficiency of the solar charge controller results in only 4% loss in power conversion, which is actually very impressive. The 110 adapter may be possible later. It seemed like it would be converting the Tesla plug into a 110 plug is my guess, not a plug within the vehicles. It, that's the gist that I'm getting. There's a little more info on the wraps. Chris mentioned they have been testing with the 3M280 wrap material in Arizona. So it sounds like they're testing harsh sun in that state. And since the only part of the vehicle that is wrapped is essentially the side, it's less than 30 inches wide, so they can provide cut patterns to wrap installers if needed. He mentioned that heated seats will be an option at launch or soon after. They said they have not considered a heating yoke, which I really wish they would put a heating steering wheel. I really use that a lot in my Nissan Leaf. I, traditionally in my Leaf, I just use the heated seats and the heated steering wheel during winter and it's been fine for me. So I hope they have a heated yoke. He also talked about the hardware for level two. He's not sure if it's an easy software upgrade or not. The hardware or more or less would be there. There's a modular part in the top part of the car inside that you can swap out in case that needs to be updated. There's no vendor on the 4G connection. They're looking for a cheap option. He did mention AT&T maybe. There are no side airbags, just front airbags. The ultrasonic sensors are on the nose instead of the wheels. The solar hatch is in two pieces, so it's the carbon fiber on the bottom and then the solar on the top. The wheel pants are a combination of carbon fiber and SMC. And there was a question, there's two cutouts in the back. One side is for the subwoofer and there's two kind of rectangular cutouts. And he says that's for a baffle, so when they close the door, it's kind of like an air um, compression deal. It's on all cars, it's just this one's more visible. You talked about the foam, basically almost call it the rudder, I suppose, in the back. So that's to take small impacts from parking mistakes or someone just bumping into at low speeds kind of deal. And he mentioned that the carpet in the back, instead of being glued down, the tie downs in the trunk are actually what holds the carpet down. So it does two functions in one go, which is really smart. He talked a little bit about the tent. They're trying to make it the most lightweight possible, and they may work with tent companies to kind of create, create more options, essentially. So they're making a really lightweight option. That would be an accessory, and a third-party tent company will probably make one later. They did talk about the option to remove the reflective mirrors later as laws change, which I was really happy to hear. And there's an ambient light sensor, which we did see in Gamma, so it will sense the light going from day to night and it will change the center screen from day to night. There will be a 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter in the back area of the Aptera. Happy to see that. The door is made from carbon fiber and the glass SMC outer. Then it has some supporting metal to give it structure. So these are the latest updates. We, I expect there to be a little trickles of information over these next few weeks to kind of perk investors' interest even more and more. So I, I expect some pretty good information to come a lot by early March to really get this basically bidding frenzy up on the leaderboard of the Accelerator program. So let me know your thoughts. Are you part of the Accelerator program? Have you donated that much? Are you thinking about it? Are you okay with it? Let me know your thoughts. I'll talk to you next time. See ya.